Indeed, all praises are due to Allah, and we as Muslims, we turn to Allah for protection against shaitan, who is our sworn and open enemy. And we as Muslims, we turn to Allah for forgiveness for the things that we have done and said that are wrong and hurtful to ourselves and to others. And we also ask Allah for forgiveness for the things that we have not done, the things that we refuse to say out of laziness or arrogance. And we as Muslims, we turn to Allah for guidance because whoever Allah guides, you have nothing to worry about. No one can misguide you or trick you or lead you astray. And for those who Allah has left to stray, there's no help that anyone can give you except Allah. And I testify that there's nothing worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger of Allah. Today I simply want to remind you about gratitude. Remind you about being thankful to Allah who has given you everything and he only gives you things and he only takes things away from you for your own benefit. Allah only gives you things and he only takes things away from you for your own good. And it will only be your own outlook on life, your own perception of reality, your own perception of what happens to you, whether you see or don't see the favors of Allah. Because sometimes the favors of Allah take a long time for you to see them. We can refer to many stories in the Quran. I personally like the story of Yusuf, who grew up with his brothers hating him. If you grow up with your siblings hating you, being jealous of you, there's a lot of little things that happen in the house that make you sad. Little things that nobody else notices, but you notice. Sometimes it's just the way they look at you. The smirk that comes on their face. Something that they do, something that they say that lets you know you're not wanted. That all your other siblings, that alone makes people say, I hate my life. And they, sometimes they're angry at school or they're always getting into fights and the teacher or the counselor is trying to talk to them and find out they'll never give it up. What's the matter with them? But the truth may be they're just not wanted in their own house. Then they take him and they throw him in a well. Yusuf is in the well not knowing what's going to happen to him. I remember when I was, I think I was 10, between 10 and 12 years old, my older brother was with uh, one of his friends and I was, you know, trying to hang out with them, you know. This little kid trying to hang out with the 16 years old and I was annoying him. And he took me by my hands and he spun me around three times and threw me down a hill and I slid down a hill and I remember my face was hitting the dirt and to this day, I remember how that felt. And I cried and I went in the house and I felt, you know, unwanted. But to have your brothers throw you down in a well and leave you to die, it, it does something to you. You have to, 
you know, I think it's very important when we read the Quran, not to just read over the stories, to personalize them. Because these are real people. These are not, we're not reading mythology, you know, Greek mythology. Sometimes I know to some it may feel that way because of all these amazing things that are happening in the Quran and people being able to control jinn and speak to animals and uh, heal the uh, sick and raise the dead. And, but this is, these are real stories. Then he gets found. At first glimpse, a person would be extremely happy. They see people, you, you hear something after being, I don't know how long in the well, and then you hear noises, and you say, oh, I'm going to, somebody's gonna find me, I can go back home. Only to be taken as a slave. I mean, at some point you gotta think that God just doesn't like me. I grew up being hated. I'm thrown into a well left to die. Now I'm a slave? Where's the upward turn? For a person in that situation, it could appear that your life is steadily going down from a bad situation to a worse situation. You know the end of the story, and you can say, MashaAllah, this person went through all of that. He was even in prison for years for something that he didn't do. You speak to an inmate. Everybody should have access to speak to a person who's been to prison for something that they didn't commit. Every few years we find someone coming out of the prison system after being in prison for 10 years, 17 years for something that they didn't do. The anger that they hold with them, you took away years of my life. I could have been uh, married, I could have had children, I could have had a job, I could have went to school. You took it away from me, I'm in prison. Prison does something to your mind. <coughs> There's people in prison, I was listening to a radio uh, the other day about solitary confinement. There's people in prison who haven't seen a tree in 27 years. They haven't been outside in over 20 years. After we're finished, you're gonna go outside and you may not even notice the tree. We'll be on our phone, texting, handling business, walking to our car, turning it on, driving, think about our stresses, our pressures. You won't even notice the tree. You won't even notice the fresh air. Finally, after all of that, Allah chooses him to be elevated to a status unmatched by most people. To be in charge of so much.